Hey fish heads, Jen Crevasse, Jekyll Bates. This is going to be a kick-ass dragon spray session. So I've used some self-etching primer on here, SEP. It is Duplicolor, and it is a pretty quick dry. It's fairly inexpensive in the realm of self-etching primers. And for what we're gonna be doing today, it's gonna be perfect because we're gonna be applying paint and some layers and some stencils. All right. So this is the first time this channel has met Jake, and he is the new baby bull, our newest and Tyler and Jess are the proud parents. And how old is he now? Almost five, five almost months. Five months. Almost what are you five doing? Months. He's like, no cameras, please. So I just wanted to say hello and let you guys say hello to Jake because I don't know when Mike's ever going to do a video again. So I figured I had to get you while I could, little man. Uh oh. We love Shy, camera. no cameras. All right, I turned the fan off just for this particular one because I'm probably going to be talking a lot of nonsense, um, not necessarily about Pokemon and Charizard, but I definitely want to talk to you guys about how I'm going to do this today. This is a Charizard mold that was pressed out of resin uh, by Fat Tony Lures, and it was given to me to paint by Bill Santana. So this is a pretty cool thing that I get to do. I don't always get the chance to paint on an actual dragon. I've done dragon scales and different types of dragon work before. Um, done stuff with like Game of Thrones theme for HBO, but this is the actual dragon. Now, there have been a couple ones out there that other people have painted in the traditional Charizard. It's like a blue and orange, and then there's the Mega Char, which is, um, it's like a blue and gray. But this, we're gonna do like an actual fire-breathing dragon. That's what I, I've been asked to do by the client. So we're gonna start with white, and then I'm gonna throw some fluorescence on there because we want as bright of flame as possible coming out of the belly and the skin of this thing. are wondering what kind of bait this is this is a crawler and if you're not familiar with swim baits if you guys are part of my crankbait crowd then you've probably seen the head and crawlers uh, on a much smaller scale there are not a whole lot of swim bait crawlers out there there's a few that work pretty well this one I would probably say it will swim um, we've had it in the water but I believe that I would probably tend to go more towards collectors item on this so it's um, definitely a cool concept bait. But if it were me, I would definitely, uh, I would want this thing somewhere in a showcase. And I've seen the one that uh, Reckless Rodents has painted. There's been a couple others and they are just really, really cool. So hopefully I can do them some justice today. Just grabbing the belly. And there's a potential that I'm gonna end up running this white into a time lapse because this is eaten up about three minutes of time by the time I get everything painted and prepped white. And the other thing is because it's so oddly weighted, it's, uh, it's a little bit rough to put in these helping hands. So I've got some older stuff that's a little bit heavier. I might try and once the white dries, relocate this onto a heavier based helping hands because the ones from Harbor Freight really don't hold anything over an ounce properly. So if you're, I'm gonna leave a link of the stuff that I normally get. Uh, I, over the winter, I got a bunch of extra of these and I had to get them quick because everything got stuck in customs from overseas. So I ended up grabbing some Harbor Freight and they just, they just don't hold up. The way the normal stuff does so if you're looking for good helping cans with a solid lead base 
heavy base. Um, I'm going to leave a link down below for you guys. So now that we have the white on, and I did do a, a little bit of an abbreviated version. I, I was probably about three minutes in, and I abbreviated this down to a minute and 50. We're going to start with yellow and work our way into orange, like the sunburst type of orange, and then some, some fluorescent red. But we're not going to do it like a fire tiger. Usually that's just straight patterns. And if you're looking at a dragon, if you've seen Game of Thrones or House of the Dragon or any of the movies where there's dragons in it, there's no layers. So fire or anything that's living like molten lava, that's going to breathe a little bit. So you want to put these down in a random pattern. And you want to think about where the shading would be on these face. So I'm just going to model in fluorescent yellow, fluorescent red, fluorescent orange. And then as we go into the bait and shade it and put scales on it, we're really going to make that come to life. At least I hope. That's my, that's my expectation. But a lot of times expectations can go sideways once you start getting into a project. As we go through here, I'm going to do a little quick tips as we go. Instead of using a Q-tip to clean out your cup, I'm now using a paintbrush because that's actually going to get in there and dig around if you have any paints that's kind of stuck to the sides of this cup as you're switching out colors and cleaning it. That works a lot better than anything. Like Q-tips have their little fibers and hairs um, and that can eventually clog up your, your airbrush. I'm also going to accent some regular colors as well, just like a normal orange and a normal red just to kind of give the internal stuff underneath the scales a little more depth. I always like to put in as much depth as I can into these things. Uh, this is the first time painting an actual dragon dragon, but I have done scaling before. So it's gonna look like a bit of a mess now. It's okay, we're adding fire. So this is, this is putting in the fire. I'm going to get a darker red. In the tradition of the Sharazar, I am going to add just a touch of blue into a couple places here. And that's pretty much where the shading would be anyways. A little bit darker against the body. Just slightly underneath the hands and the arms and the claws. On the inside of the leg. go. I'm going to add a little bit of dark red. I'm adding it to the bottom of the wings as well. And on the tips. a little bit more yellow and orange, and then we're gonna let it dry. It's probably gonna dry for about an hour. Six hours later. After we do this, we're just gonna let it dry. Just finishing up any splotches. Try and get this pretty even. I know, it, it looks janky now, but it's not gonna. We've got the entire bait covered with fluorescence in random spots, because fire isn't one specific color. It kind of lives and breathes, has a life of its own. 
So we're gonna let this sucker dry for about an hour off camera, and then we're gonna come back and pick it up with scaling. Now one word to the wise, you do not have to paint this assembled. You can take these pins out, do it this way. You can take these pins out right here and the wings will come out. You can also unscrew the wings um, from the resin point on the inside, but it's easier if you just pull these pens out. Uh, I may do that. I kind of like to see everything in proportion when I'm working with it, so I may or may not do that. When this dries, we're going to figure that out from that point. 8.01 p.m. So I've turned off the fan to kind of give you guys an idea of what we're going to be doing here. I have some old netting and it's it's been around for a number of years. I keep a bag of it laying around. And I have pulled the pens. There were pens that held the wings together. So I have taken that out and I'm going to use some alligator clips to keep this nice and tight as I'm going through everything here. And we're going to put this together and then we're going to paint over this and we're going to create that fire look. So I decided to go ahead and take everything apart. Got the pens out. I've got everything clamped together. And we are now going to start to create a scale and lava effect. We're going to do the lava first. And I've got everything kind of piecemealed together here. Um, black first. And I'm going to try and do this part because I, I only have a little bit of... A little bit of clamp on that. We're just going to shoot straight down, 90 degree angle, and of course that's going to start going off. I just filled that tank. Might be time for some maintenance with it. But the reason I'm doing this a little bit at a time is so that I can kind of give you a better demonstration of how this is going to look. And I'm doing this very lightly. My PSI is around 10, 10 to 15. And the pieces that are molded together, I kind of want to go through and get done first. And then I'm going to come back with another airbrush because I'm running two airbrushes right now. And just uh, do a little bit of white. And I'm going to angle the white. And I've shown you guys this technique in other videos before, but we just want to come at it, add a little depth into that. And that's going to take that from black to gray, and then you're still going to see some black in the corners where I've angled this. And that is probably the easiest way that I know to add a little bit of depth into this. I'm gonna heat set this real quick. And when we peel this back, at least on this side, that's the side I'm concentrating on right now, you're going to see this kind of an effect. That's going to give you that crackle, beautiful lava underneath the scales. Now, there is a lot more that needs to be done to these. I'm going to actually do small scales all the way back. But this is a really good way to start the base. A lot of people were excited for me to do this. 
I've got this video coming up. And then I also have, uh, and it's actually sitting off to the side here, this old triple trout. And we're going to go ahead and do a peacock with that in a later video. But this is a whole lot of fun, and it's starting to look like a dragon. You can look at it. If you actually come in here, you don't you you won't be on camera because the camera's so Chris, our production manager, is looking at Ooh, this. That's really good. That's really good. So, nice. It's not anywhere near done. We'll get there. <laughs> See ya. Have a good weekend. Get that all happy. And then if you have a little piece like this that's kind of sticking out, you can take one of the pieces that I just pulled off and just loosely wrap it around the leg, the angle that you want. And you want to do both of those at the same time. If you don't have it clamped, then you got to do two colors at once. At least that's the easiest way to do it. And the only way I know how to do that is to run two airbrushes. So, fortunately or unfortunately, just kind of press that down. Get it as tight as you can. Come in with your black. And then angle your white right on top of it. And that'll give you that effect. So I'm gonna finish putting this black on here. And then we're going to angle the white and then we're going to do our wings and I'm going to get a little bit darker in some spaces like uh, around the joints where you would naturally see some definition and shading and I think that that's really important to represent that because you want it to look as lifelike as possible so anywhere where there's a crease in this or around the neck underneath the hands and the arms and then right at the base where the wings are on both sides here maybe get that a little bit darker too and then do a little bit less white when you pick up the next brush and so because I do have two brushes that allows me the opportunity to just and you kind of want to make sure that your shading is going in the same direction. If you get shading weird, um, unless you understand how to make it look 3D and where it's moving, where there's some mobility. But the easiest way is to just grab single direction. And I'm bringing this brush at roughly a 30 degree angle to the bait. You can see that I'm not right over top of it I'm down like this so I'm shooting across the bait and not at the bait and that's really important when you're putting depth into these things now because it's 3d and not flat it's not a completely flat surface there are going to be some spots that look a little bit different and inconsistent but that goes along with shading and I'm okay with that because what we what we lack in our ability we can make up with when we put the scales on now these make it look really cool like lava but it's not necessarily the final reveal to this bait still want to do some really cool scales get a little bit lighter going down the back bring that ear tip Just a little bit on the belly and the hands. As we pull this apart, this is already starting to look kind of cool. We still have a ways to go with it though.
we're getting there. Now you can understand why it was really key to do the modeled look and not do like red and then yellow and then green. I mean, you can do it that way. You could do like a really trippy fire tiger pattern, but if you want to do like live fire, like it's breathing, you want to make sure that that's as random as you can with your base colors. We're going to repeat the same process and I'm going to aim straight down with the black and then angle the white over top of it. Try and get it as evenly as I can across this bait. Go a little bit darker in some areas, a little bit lighter. You come in and maybe want that, uh, that fluorescent underneath to kind of shine through in some areas. Angle that up. Yeah, there's going to be some spots where these uh, little alligator clips have uh, interfered with being able to put paint down, but that's really irrelevant once your scales go on. It's totally fine. Same thing with this. Let's go over that entire bait. Work with the material you can. I've always provided links for you guys on the materials that I use, where I get those materials. I, I am an affiliated associate, so it does help me put food on the family's table. But I will always tell you where I get it and the best price that I can find it at so that you guys can go forward in your hobbies and careers. If you guys want to do this for a living, you certainly can. The only thing stopping you is you. I say that now after eight years of doing this full time, literally leaving a day job and saying I'm never going to bus shoplifters again because I'm getting my ass kicked for packs of cigarettes. And I did have fun in that, in that job. I've done a lot of different things. That's a whole different video. You can watch that on the Catch Co one. They did a really cool documentary. Bryant Patterson is an amazing director and he just did a fantastic job that's a whole different video. So I've been on the water. I've done lots of stuff with minerals management service, and I've done stuff with the dredging industry and the army Corps of engineers. I worked Deepwater horizon when the platform blew up in 2010 in the Gulf of Mexico off the Louisiana coast, same directional. And I can maybe move that slightly as we come around, just so that you want to, you want to portray depth and movement in, in, a somewhat flat surface. And I'm just angling this and then moving it slightly this way so that it's coming across the bait in a unified direction. When I flip this, I'm going to come this way because we need the shadows to go in the same direction and then on the edges as we detail that um, it's gonna kind of fade away anyways and then we'll do the same thing now we have to look at how we did this side and I came around this way so on the opposite side, we're going to come around the other way. These are facing each other. So we're going to go from this side. Now. Flip it, come around this side. And a little bit more direct on the edges. And the big reveal. Let's see what this looks like. I don't need to heat set it because I didn't blast paint real thick on it. It's just a light spray. 
I'm using the Iwata HPCS series. And then I have some finer detailing brushes should I choose to use them. But let's just see how this is starting to shape up. And I always like to do this live so you guys know that I haven't done anything weird off camera with it. Oh, look at, look at that. That's juicy. That's the juice right there. Day four. Many months later. We are coming down the home stretch on this build out of the dragon. And I'm just gonna add in a little bit of scaling for the shoulders and the edges of the wings. I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. It's been a long one. I'm probably at the tail end of this doing some time lapses and stuff for you guys so you don't have to watch the hours that it's almost as like a nerd forge deal where I've just been going at this for days. Um, I don't know that I would say that I got carried away with it, but I definitely wanted to give it something different. I uh, like doing different things. And this is definitely one of those. So I'm gonna continue on the base of this, of scaling the edges of the wings and like the, the bones. And then we will come back in and I'll give you a reveal. And we will talk about what we did today. So this has been how to paint your dragon. And the dragon body itself is the Charizard from Tony Campus. It's been a fun, fun, something completely different for me to do. 
on this one. So definitely had a good time with this today. And all I'm doing here is a little bit of scaling and just backing this up as I go. Probably move these down here because yeah, I've got a little bit left to go in there on the points. And then after we get this white on, I'm going to do a little bit of black and a little bit of gold. There we go. There we have it. Now we're gonna accent the accent with a super fine Uniball Vision Elite. And I'm gonna come on both sides of this. And then just draw lines around it. We just wanna follow the curves in the fold. give that an illusion of depth. A little bit darker up top. Same with this. Just where the inside of the wing would start. And I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side, just where the folds are. Give it that illusion of depth. We'll flip it over to the other side. And that's just about, damn it. That's just about the end of it. I'm gonna show you the final reveal here in a second. Hope you guys have enjoyed this one. Something different from me. There we go. This is going to pop a lot more when it's clear coated, but this is how to paint your Dragon 101. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Got lots of lava and depth on the wings. Got some armor plating on the tail and on the chest. Scaling on the wings. It. If you want to see more cool videos like this, let me know. Drop me a comment in the description, and I will see you guys on the next video. Cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates.